Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science and the Life Science and Biology Year in Review. We began the year with the basic unit of life, the cell. In other words, the cell is considered the smallest thing that is alive. In order for something to be alive, it needs to have these six characteristics. It needs to be made of cells, contain DNA, respond to stimuli, grow and develop, reproduce, and require energy. The organelles of a cell work together to keep the cell alive. Let's take a look at them. Living organisms can be made up of one cell, which is called unicellular, or many cells, which is called multicellular. Life also has levels of organization. Cells make tissues, which make organs, which make organ systems, which make organisms. Let's take a look at these levels of organization. The cell divides during cell division, which includes mitosis. Cell division begins during interphase when the cell makes copies of organelles and the DNA. Mitosis begins with prophase, when chromosomes first appear. During metaphase, the nuclear membrane dissolves and the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. During anaphase, the sister chromatids separate and move away from one another. During telophase, the nuclear membrane forms around the chromosomes and the chromosomes unwind. This is the end of mitosis. During cytokinesis, two cells are created. Genetics is a study of how traits are passed from one generation to the next. Let's take a look at the following topics. Genes, chromosomes, traits, alleles, Punnett squares, selective breeding, and asexual reproduction. When two organisms reproduce, the offspring is slightly different. As a result, the world has a tremendous variety of life. Charles Darwin proposed a theory of evolution to explain this variety of life. Six kingdoms of life include bacteria, archaea, plant, animal, fungi, and protists. Two are prokaryotic, which means they do not have a nucleus, and this includes bacteria and archaea. And they are also the only kingdoms with 100% unicellular organisms. Four are eukaryotic, which means they have a nucleus, plant, animal, fungi, and protists. Plants are autotrophic, which means they get their energy from the sun. Animals and fungi are heterotrophic, which means they rely on other organisms for food. And bacteria and protists have both autotrophic and heterotrophic organisms. This forest is an ecosystem. This pond can be considered an ecosystem. And even this rotting log can be an ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of living and non-living objects living together in a particular area. Let's look at a cartoon example. In this ecosystem, you have the biotic factors, which include the hawk, the bear, the fish, and all of the other living organisms, along with the abiotic factors, such as the water, the amount of sunlight, and the temperature. All of these factors interact in order to make a community. Ecosystems come in a large variety of sizes. It can exist in a smaller area, such as a decaying tree trunk, or a pond, or it can exist in large forms such as an entire rainforest. Two major types of uh, ecosystems are terrestrial and aquatic. A terrestrial ecosystem is a land-based community of organisms and the interactions of biotic and abiotic components in a given area. An example would be this deciduous forest. An aquatic ecosystem is water-based, much like this lake river, or coral reef. Within these ecosystems, you have symbiotic relationships among the living factors. There are three main types of symbiotic relationships. Mutualism occurs when both species benefit. The bee gets nectar from the flower and spreads pollen for the flower. Commensalism involves one species benefiting while one is neither helped nor harmed. The clownfish gets protection and the sea anemone gets, well, nothing. A parasitic relationship is one in which one benefits and the other is harmed. The tick gets a tasty meal and the human well may get sick. The more you study how life works on our planet, the more amazing and interesting it becomes. And